Why is my fucking TV not shooting? So with Battlefield 6 right around the corner now, I've been playing heaps of Battlefield 4 just getting ready for the new title. Ever since Battlefield 1 released, and honestly just for a long time now, this is the game that I've kept coming back to. It's always found a way to keep you captivated in it, and it's honestly just a true classic at this point. One of the things I like most about Battlefield 4 though is definitely just the variety of it, and honestly this is something that I really encourage everyone to do within Battlefield, but that is just to go hop in a jet maybe, hop in a tank, fly a helicopter, you know, do absolutely everything that the game has to offer, you'll have a lot more fun that way. And on that theme, that is exactly what I'm trying to do coming into Battlefield 6. So I'm playing a lot of Battlefield 4 and I'm just working on other things aside from the jets actually, just to get better at the game in general, and so I can have a lot more fun with it. So back in the day, I actually did this by setting a goal for myself, which was to get a 100 kill streak in every single vehicle. This took me a while, but in the process, I learned a lot about how to use each vehicle and when to use each one depending on the situation. So during this process, I found that the hardest two vehicles for me at least were definitely the IFV and the SCAR helicopter. The IFV was hard because you need to play your 1v1s against tanks really carefully, or else you'll get critically hit. Now the scout helicopter was probably hard just because I couldn't aim it, but also that resulted in me overcommitting for kills and I just get smored, I get towed, everything. I just was not very good at staying alive with it. I could get the kills, but I could not stay alive. Anyways, that slight drawback of not being able to aim it really leads onto what I actually love about this vehicle so much. It has a really high mechanical skill ceiling, so the more time you end up putting into it, the more you get out of it. Anyways, if you guys do end up enjoying this gameplay, be sure to like, subscribe, and actually go down to the link in the description and follow the Twitch at twitch.tv slash silk2g. I stream three days a week, and it's an absolutely great time. I'd love to see some of you guys over there. Anyways, onto the gameplay now. We do have the scout helicopter on Flood Zone. Now, this, in my opinion, is the best map for the scout helicopter. You don't have an AA, you don't have any jets. All you really have to deal with is the enemy scout helicopter and the transport helicopter. Now the labs can get really annoying with toes and you can have an attack boat that will spawn if the dam gets dropped, but especially before that dam gets dropped, this is the map to play. And especially on this side with the massive building which I'll explain a bit later, the scout helicopter just absolutely tears it off. Now when I'm not slamming the helicopter into buildings or poles, I think I actually do alright with it and the only reason I've really been able to get to this level is just by putting a lot of hard work and looking at what actually kills me and how to fix those mistakes. So the first death I actually took in this game and the only death I'm going to take was before this uh, gameplay is actually being recorded right now. But basically, I overcommitted for a kill because I missed my shots. I got AA mined and I got shot out the heli. And then Spy brought it back to me and then this is what you're seeing right now. The whole purpose of that is just to explain that the main thing that I used to kill me in the scout helicopter was overcommitting. I got way too committed to kills and that would result in me, you know, getting shot out, getting smored, all that stuff. So you do not want to overcommit. That's the first thing I've absolutely learned. And one of the reasons a lot of people actually overcommit is because they miss their shots. So then you have to try to figure out a way to hit more shots with the scout helicopter. And one of the main tips I actually got, which was from our X8 Reaps, probably the best scout helicopter pilot in the world at this point. Um, he said to line up your shot first, so you make sure your crosshair is on them, and only then do you shoot. Now I can't do this perfectly, so you will still see me spray sometimes, but I do try to line up my shots first, and this results in the enemy dying instantly. So like that guy right there, he had no time to react really because I lined up my shot and as soon as I start clicking, my bullets are hitting him. So that's exactly what you want to do with the scout helicopter. And if you can do that, you avoid the movement in Battlefield 4, which is actually really, really strong. The movement in this game is insane and if an enemy player starts to put the moves on you, you can easily end up getting smored, shot out, you can overcommit, get AA mined. All that stuff will get you killed. Now another major thing I used to do was I used to engage enemies way too close. I kind of had the opinion that the miniguns are a close range weapon and they do the most damage up close, which obviously they do, they do more damage up close, but these things have so much range that most players don't even take advantage of. Especially on a 60 hertz server, you can laze people from an extreme distance and you don't even have to get close to them. So yeah, I brought my engagement distance right back and that's actually resulted in not only me getting smored less and towed less and just AA mined a lot less, but the other thing that's helped with is actually aiming. So by being further away, the, the enemy's movements appear to be smaller and less significant, and that will actually allow you to track fast movements a bit better. So let's say an enemy running across your screen up really close, you have to rotate the entire heli super fast to even track that. But if you're coming from a longer range, then their movements are gonna seem really small, and you can actually just tap A or D a couple times and get your aimer on them that way. Now as far as actually controlling the scout helicopter goes, I would recommend just finding a sensitivity you're comfortable with and in the vehicles especially, you can kind of just stick to it. I don't think you need to change your sensitivities too much, it doesn't even do that much, but for me at least, I use 1600 DPI, 9% in-game vehicle sense, 
And then I only change a few keybinds with a scout helicopter. I do have space bound to pitch up, but that is definitely not necessary. I also do have my countermeasures on my scroll wheel, so as soon as I get locked, I scroll down and that will get rid of the missile. I find that's really useful, especially if you're just waiting for your ECM to come back. You can spam the scroll wheel and it'll come up as soon as you get it. And then the final thing I've done is I put my map key onto a side mouse button. And that's really important, especially in the jets though. I like to check my map all the time. In the scout helicopter, I use my minimap a lot more. And having a bigger minimap like I have in this gameplay, I've always recommended running a massive minimap in Battlefield. If you're a good player, you're always looking at the minimap. That's how you find your kills. And you can also actually make the minimap range a bit larger so you can see more of the map around you, which is good in the scout helicopter because unlike infantry, if you see an enemy 200 meters away on the minimap, you can actually just fly straight to him and kill him. Whereas on infantry, you might have to make a bit of a trek to do that and it'd be a lot more risky. So that is my advice for minimap settings and just general settings for the game. However, settings will only take you so far, and I think a major thing about learning a scout helicopter is actually just identifying what you have to kill to stay alive. So just like the jets, there is definitely a target priority list, and in the scout helicopter it's actually quite similar because it's an air vehicle. The only thing is, the jet can actually deal with every single thing that goes for it. The scout helicopter, let's say there's an AA, it doesn't deal with AAs very well. It doesn't deal with any kind of land vehicles very well at all. So my target priority in the scout helicopter on flood zone at least looks a bit like this. So. I'll start by going for the scout helicopter, that is super important. As you see here, the scout helicopter can push you and it can do a lot of damage, so I like going for that straight away. Now the next thing I like going for is definitely the transport helicopter. That thing is just super annoying and especially with some good gunners in it, it can really shred you to pieces. So I always go for the transport next and the other thing it can do is it can drop people to locations where you don't want them. For example, the entire enemy team right now is on A flag. I do not want them here, it's really annoying having enemies behind you, I'd rather have that as my teammates flag. but. A transport helicopter can put enemies in locations where you would never want them to be. So getting that thing out of the way and not even letting it cross half map, that is basically what you want to do every single time if you can. Now the next threat on this map, well this is a bit of a hard one. So it really is the labs I'd say. The labs are really annoying and they can tow you pretty easily. However, if there aren't good players in the labs and you can tell that they're just kind of noobs, I would leave the labs alone at that point. You don't really want to aggro them and make them all annoyed at you and shoot their cannons at you, but if you have a lab that's constantly going for toes, you do need to try to laser guide him and at least deter him from doing that. Now after that, you have the toe launchers on this map. They are really annoying if a good player gets onto those. And aside from that, that's basically it. The boat does spawn if the dam gets dropped, and then when that happens, you do need to kill the boat as well. But the scout helicopter is different to the jet, where in the jet, you basically need to kill the counters that can kill you. However, in the scout helicopter, you can just avoid them. So let's say the AA is on the map and you're getting annoyed at it. You just fly somewhere else, put a building between you and the AA and you're alright. So that is a major difference between the jet and the scout and I actually like that a lot. It allows you to keep farming regardless of what's on the map, you just have to play smart around it. Now as for the loadout selection, I know a lot of people use the 25mm cannons but I'm here to tell you that those things are absolutely terrible and you should never use them over the miniguns. Sure they're easier because they have splash damage but just put some practice into the miniguns, trust me guys, you will get so much more out of them. Now the next thing you can choose between is either heat seekers or laser guided missiles. Now for me this is a no brainer, I don't think heat seekers are necessary at all and when you figure out how to play against players with heat seekers, it is super easy to avoid them just by sitting behind the building, wait until they shoot a heat seeker then just dodging it. That's all you have to do and then when they fire one heat seeker you can push them because worst thing that can happen they shoot another one and then you just ECM it and then you just go in with the miniguns and spray them down. Even if you don't actually manage to spray them down, what you can do is you can go under radar, so you fly really close to the ground, and then they can't even lock you at that point. So, look, heat seekers, they're alright. They're, they're alright for players who don't know how to dogfight in the scout helicopter, but once you get the hang of it, and you learn how to use buildings to avoid them, they become super, super weak, and it's almost never that I'll die to a play with heat seekers. Now, the next thing is definitely the perk selection, and a lot of people like to use air radar, which doesn't make sense to me. So firstly, air radar isn't good in the scout helicopter because you're not really dealing with air vehicles too often and if you have some decent awareness, you can keep track of where they are anyway. The other thing is that by using air radar, you actually get rid of your minimap and the minimap is exactly how I find almost all of my kills in this vehicle. Now the other option I see people sometimes using is the stealth coating. This actually isn't too bad, it will help you basically have more time until a stinger can lock onto you. However, the best option for me for the perk is definitely the belt feeder. Now what belt feeder does is it gives you more time until your miniguns overheat. So this is really useful against those kind of tanky vehicles which you can still spray down. So that's like transport helicopters, MRAPs, rib boats, 
it is really nice to be able to just hold down your mouse button for longer and just keep firing. It will result in you killing those vehicles faster if you don't have to burst fire, and it's just less stress on you in general. The other thing is in Scat Helicopter 1v1s against a really good pilot, the pilot with belt feeder will probably win more often than not because while the other guy will have to be bursting and losing out on their DPS, the belt feeder pilot can just hold down their mouse for longer and they can keep hitting shots. So that is really important. I would say that belt feeder is always the one to go for there. Now for the countermeasures, you have the options of fire extinguisher, which you should never use, flares, which are decent, but then you have ECM jammer, which is by far for me, that is the best countermeasure for the Sky Helicopter. Now the reason for this is that there's no reason to have the flares really, like they do regen a bit faster, but the ECM gives you way more time without being able to be locked. It also works a lot better on the helicopters than it does in the jets. So in the jets, the ECM doesn't actually work that well. It works sometimes, it doesn't work every single time. I still use it myself, but I know a lot of people that use flares and I actually understand that. In the Scout Heli though, the ECM works almost every single time and just having seven seconds where you cannot be locked, that is super helpful and seven seconds ends up being such a large amount of time in an actual public match. So one of the things you want to learn about with ECM is basically how hard you can go before you have to leave. So let's say you have like four or five enemies in front of you. You have a cover that's maybe, you know, like four seconds away. You have to be able to figure out that, okay, I have about like three seconds to kill these guys as soon as I pop ECM. Then I must start flying towards my cover, otherwise I'll get stingered. Now this isn't something you calculate out in your head. You don't use, you know, velocity, distance, time, all that kind of stuff. You don't worry about it. You just kind of learn that, okay, this is about this far away. I can probably dodge it if, using this building if I really have to, but my desired piece of cover is always like this amount of time away. And you kind of just learn that with game sense. That is something you have to practice to do and just kind of learn what you can get away with in the scout helicopter. It's the same with the jets, but with the helis especially, you can use cover to dodge missiles a lot better. You can use almost anything to dodge a missile in this game. It is absolutely insane when you get used to it. I think that does just about sum up the scout helicopter though. At least for me, the things I talked about in this video were really holding me back, and now after practicing in those few areas, I'm finally starting to feel some consistency in the Scout Heli. If I missed anything, do let me know in the comments, and also let me know what I should try out next. I know a lot of you guys were asking for the Scout Helicopter gameplay after I showed it a bit in that Ninja Strike game, so here it is in its lack of glory. Anyways, if you're watching up until this point, you're an absolute legend, I really appreciate all the support. If you like the videos, please consider subscribing and if you want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, a comment and a like does go a long way. Anyways, I'll leave it to the rest of this gameplay. There's just a few minutes left. Just going to keep on shredding these noobs with the Sky Helicopter. I hope you guys all enjoy and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.